is the Glass Cannon Network. the truck time on the glass cannon network what's going on everybody welcome back happy night to you day whenever you're listening to this i don't even know what night of the week this is going to be on but i'm uh, i'm i'm happy and excited to be back playing some delta green with my good buddies yes sydney troy skid francis how's it going everybody francis are you uh are you working on a green screen set right now i am in this inside of uh, radioactive container. <laughs> don't, don't tell me the project. Don't tell me the project. Transformers 7. Yeah. Uh, uh, Francis signed an NDA, but was fine. Uh, was able to uh, come to us live from yes. the set of Transformers 7. Uh, yes. Troy, you got a little Ganzoni going. Summer beverages. Oh, Jealous. Unlocked. Jealous. The official <laughs> beer of the Glass Cannon Network summer. Uh, Narragansett, Del Shandoni. Oh, love a good I, shandy. I wish That's I was summer drink ever. Season. Love a Ganzoni Shandoni. It's just, <laughs> it's great stuff. Remember back in the day, mm -hmm. GCP times, when giant slayer times were going back to Ooh. when remember when skid would just set a sixer of narragansett down in front of himself <laughs> and just drink all of them during a single episode that of the last show? one had to have been yeah. so warm <laughs> no, they really were it was like so i wanted to get a little mini fridge to put under the under the table by my seat yeah couldn't walk all the way to that kitchen that would be that'd be ridiculous <laughs> Uh, but it is, I love Gansett as a, as a summer beer and, uh, and Shandy, especially, uh, as a summer brew, man, fun. You probably haven't tried the other flavors. They've got a watermelon one. I know one, they have a watermelon one. A cherry one. one. No, Oof. man. No. Dude, they're fucking know. great. Dude, watermelon margarita. Cherry margarita. Oh, yeah. Like okay. that watermelon beer. I just, just give me a beer that tastes like a beer. It's not a yeah. beer. With it's a, a little Shandoni. lemon in it. It's a Shandoni. <laughs> it's, it's not a beer. Shandoni. It's a Shandoni. That's the act. It's, it's not a beer. Season. It's a Shandoni. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing their marketing for them. Uh, we no. reached out to them last year because they released a whole bunch of Lovecraft themed beers. I'm like, 90% oh. of our network is Lovecraft themed. And we talk about Shandonis constantly. And they oh. said, what are Shandonis? And hung up. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, we don't speak your nerd language. <laughs> sorry, are you drunk? Are you drunk? Or not? <laughs> uh, Sydney, are you? So this is uh, obviously air uh, being recorded earlier than it's airing. So we're a little deeper into summer when this is airing. But like <coughs> summer plans, are you going anywhere fun or exciting? Are you doing any summer vacations? Um. I, man, my schedule is so insane this summer. Unfortunately, with my my production design job, we have non. When I tell you, I look at my calendar and want to disappear off the face of the earth. It is not. <laughs> uh, Troy gets it. Troy, Troy's not. You know how it feels. Uh, it, if yeah. someone were to look over my shoulder on the subway, they would think I'm playing fucking Tetris <laughs> with all the different colors in my Google Calendar of shit that is going on. But that being said, I did plan, and this is perfect. I can say this because. Xavier won't hear this in time because the airing of it, he will never know. I planned a birthday getaway for oh. him, which is going to be later in the summer because I'm <laughs> too busy right now in August. But I got us uh, a few nights at like a farm in Western New York. So I'm going to rent a car. We're going to stay at the farm and they offer like some cool workshop stuff. Like you can make cheese, you can tour the farm and like feed the goats and, you know, hang with the chickens. And I was Murder like, that, local. <laughs> get away with it. <laughs> they don't care. Um, so but it's I was just like, going to be you two and families with five-year-old children? Well, the good thing is there's only <laughs> one place to rent. You either can rent like, they call it uh, like a stable hand 
cabin or something. It's sort of like away from the property or the farmhouse itself, which is like from the 1850s. There's only one bedroom. Um, it's really cool. So we're going to be alone on the farm. Uh, <laughs> and they, they can That's cook, amazing. cook dinner and stuff. So I figure like, oh, one night. So we'll this have is like, a total surprise. He doesn't know this is coming. Total surprise. I just told him like <laughs> those dates. Make sure you're free. Um, but yeah, so that's my vacation. I'd love to get to the beach at some point just in the city, but that's like my rent a car and that's go, awesome. go somewhere vacation. Francis, do you like a, a surprise? Like, do you like to be surprised? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hurt someone. If someone, if someone walks up on me, like, <laughs> without me knowing, I'm going to, and like, and especially if I'm not expecting to see people, like, yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to first fight or flight, and it's most likely going to be fight. Somebody's going to get punched in the face. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. So, so if someone books a nice farmhouse getaway for you. You'll no. punch them in the face. I'm going to wonder. I'm going to be on the car wondering, why are we driving into the wilderness? What's happening? What are we doing? Stop. <laughs> Jump out of the car. You're taking me to, into Saw. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Troy, uh, are you taking the kids anywhere this summer? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're heading up to Lake Placid. Oh, um, of course. Why do I even oh, ask? He, nice. nice. Yeah, Troy I mean, found a place that he likes 15 years ago. And has never gone to another destination. <laughs> well, vacation. you know, it was it was right when my wife and I started dating, and I, I uh, her birthday falls on Christmas, and so I was like, oh God, I got to do Christmas presents and birthday presents. I'm like, why don't I do like one big birthday present, uh, like a trip, uh, and then the and then Christmas presents galore, you know. Um, and I did, but I didn't have any money. And so I was just like looking around for places. I was like, oh, what? Sh Lake Placid, that's where the Olympics were. And I went up, we went up there and for two nights, because that's all I could spring for. And we've gone every single uh, Christmas since we went the day after our wedding for like a mini moon, because we didn't go for our honeymoon to like a month after the wedding. We've been, and we went from like dating to married uh, to pregnant uh, to uh, one kid, two kid, and now three kids. To uh, like a, a gate over the stairwell. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you you know, we've been there for so long that everyone always says you gotta got you gotta come during the summer. You gotta come during the summer too. It's just as great uh, in the summer as it is the winter. So we started doing the summers as well, and uh, it's spectacular. We just fucking love it up there. So we're taking uh, her dad and uh, her brother up there. We got a, a house. That's so pool. funny fun. to me that like that, that that somebody would be like, it's even spectacular in the summer. It's like. It's it's livable in the summer. Like, in the winter, it's a nightmare. Like you, you love it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, colder. The Do you better. get like snowed in? Is that how it works? Like you get snowed in when you're up there? Uh, sometimes. I mean, it, it almost always snows every sing single time we go. Oh, you can go nice. in December, and it could be like beautiful out one day and then snow the next um but like the first time we went we went in late january and it was negative 11 and i remember just walking around and i didn't know i didn't know how to use like maps on my phone i was like i think the brewery is this way we're halfway <laughs> around mirror lake just <laughs> sloshing through the <laughs> ice and <snow. laughs> but we went you took me up there just yeah. the two of us no we yes. went up with our families <laughs> in the summer away. and man it was amazing like canoeing paddle boating on the beautiful lake and the beautiful weather I'm like give me this over the winter hang i mean this th it was amazing in the summer for sure yeah so we're gonna head up there um uh, fourth of july skid nice. by the sad and sour look on your face i assume you're not doing anything fun this summer no uh we did have a trip planned but we had to cancel it for work uh, it was something very cool, but it was the one window that we had that we could do it, and so we had to cancel it. But, uh, <laughs> so depressing. Yeah. Awkward. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but we are. I am. We are going to my dad and stepmom are doing a family reunion for their uh, 40th anniversary. Uh, oh, nice. Or 35th anniversary um, coming up in August. So uh, going down to Albuquerque for that in August. Oh, great! Yeah, so that should be fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I uh, Well, we've talked about this before, but I, I'm always jealous of your trips to New Mexico just because of that cuisine. It is just oh, yeah. the best. Best in the world. I've heard there's a lot of good restaurants down there. Is that That's not bullshit. That's, that's like actual, that's a fact. You, like New Mexican cuisine is just like a kind of a version of Tex-Mexy food that is just so, so good. It's right my on. favorite. Carne Autobada, all the like green chili in the world, give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Um, there really used to be a awesome. place. There used to be a place in Manhattan that that was New Mexico, like owned and run by people from New Mexico, and it was like expensive too, uh, and it was just so good. And it went out of business. It was a real, real bummer. Like, come on, it, how are people so, not patronizing this? It's just weird. And it, even that, I just 
that the authentic stuff it cannot survive here and i don't know why yeah it's there's really like for all the good that this city has like you can't find stuff like that like i have never seen like green chili available here anywhere and it's like one of the most magnificent substances ever created by the mind of man. And they just like can't like you have the internet. There's a highway you could take that goes right there. There's planes. I don't know why it can't <laughs> migrate culturally the distance from like that time zone into this one. I don't get it at all. But yeah, I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. I think it is so baffling that like an authentic place like that like would not be open forever in in New York City yeah. that has you know that one kind of cuisine. And you're right. It's like green chilies are like, if you go all the way back, however, you know, th uh, tens of thousands of years to like the agricultural revolution, it feels like the, the green chili is the peak. It's like that was <laughs> oh, yeah. when you, you figured out the perfect food because that it, when you roast that and grind it down and put it on literally anything, it's amazing. Sydney, you, you, are you a New Mexico person? Never I've been? Never, I've never been. All right. Well, you got to go. I'd, yeah. I'd love to go. I also, I'm a big, big fan of uh, Mexican food, Southern food. I think that I'm curious about this combination that you're talking about. And I wish there was apparently no longer a restaurant in New York City where I could go yeah, try it. Yeah, damn. But. Yeah. Well, you'll get there one of these days. Uh, Xavier's next birthday, book a farmhouse the, outside of Santa Fe. There you go. I'll <laughs> go stay go. on uh, the Ghost Ranch. Is that, that's New Mexico, right? The Ghost Ranch? You guys know what I'm talking Ghost about? Ghost Ranch. No. Let's get into the Let's session, everybody. <laughs> uh, no, I must know more. <laughs> <laughs> the Ghost Pepper Ranch? No, the Ghost Ranch. Whatever. It's like a cool ranch. I'm pretty sure it's New Mexico. Hmm. Cool Area Ranch 51? dressing? No, forget it. Never mind. The three people listening who know what the Ghost Ranch is is like, cool reference. Google it. Speaking of Googling it, last week... Mm. Ooh, you guys did some Googling. Ooh. Last week was a uh, hell of an ep. Hell of an ep as you guys uh, get to sit down and talk to Ed Wist, who you'll <sighs> see now uh, on your evidence board. I, I've, I've updated it since our last session with the faces of, uh, of those folks that you have met. Uh, Ed Myler Wist and, uh, you know, among others. Um yeah, uh, yeah, and, and Richard Bryce, I think he was on there last week, but Ed Myler Wiss, uh, Gail Houston uh, from the front desk, Ulrikia Vores as well. Ulrikia. So, yeah, Ulrikia. Oh. Uh, Francis, Francis you, like, you like her? Bobby's interested. Oh. <laughs> Bobby's, Bobby's paying attention. Bobby's single now. <laughs> Bobby's oh, yeah. very single. Boy. Bobby like. Bobby like. <laughs> uh, well, you guys get a chance to sit down and talk to Ed Wist, who tells you he can tell you where uh, the patients are. But uh, Bobby, in an attempt to strong arm him, strong arm him, not only strong arm arm him, but gaslight yeah. a. Uh, mental patient on the third floor of a uh, of a uh, violent uh, hospital wing is uh, attacked by this patient. Uh, not, uh, the the patient is pulled off of Bobby, but not before his nose gets pretty busted up, and uh, and he's taken away sadly. But he does say something as he's running away. I, I was going to tell them it all started. Everything changed on August twenty eighth, and this is where you guys start to put together the first bit of like strange information, which is. That uh, all of the agents received a FedEx package with an invitation on August 28th during the day, during like regular mail receiving hours. Let's assume it's, you know, nine to five somewhere in that window. And it wasn't until that night that the patients actually went missing. So that's a funky little uh, detail. Then you uh, proceed to go through, Vicky proceeds to go through the visit visitation records of the hospital, and she makes a wild connection, which is a name that is unique and stood out, Barbus. Dr. Elias Barbus visited the mental hospital in April of 2015, and that name just stuck out to Vicky because of her focus on the previous evidence from 20 years ago, where that name appears on a script of a part of a play that was found in Abigail Wright's apartment, and Barbus seemed to enter a room where someone named Richard and Dr. Lyra Westover were, were speaking. So that was an interesting tidbit. Then uh, Roger, while having a smoke outside, 
uh, and convinced that he would be unable to ever leave the hospital's gr- hospital grounds and that he had walked into some sort of alternate dimension, sees uh, the orderly Richard Bryce, apparently taking his advice that he needs to work on his shoulders and head to the gym. Richard Bryce walks out with his gym bag. Uh, and as he's headed to his car, Roger is watching him like a hawk. And because Troy said that specifically, right before he got to his car, Richard Bryce seemed to turn and almost talk to his gym bag and then put the gym bag in the car, hopped in and drove off. You guys reconnected, shared the evidence that you all found and ended up in Neil's hotel room. Neil's hotel room in the Ritz Carlton in downtown Boston. And after arriving shortly thereafter, you hop on the internet and start researching, Googling Dr. Elias Barbas, and you get a hit pretty quickly because it's a unique name and it comes right up as Massachusetts. And you see that it is a, a profile of a, uh, of a doctor slash uh, detective from the Massachusetts State Police named Dr. Elias Barbas. And when you see his picture, immediately you all recognize the man that met you in the Gateway Bridges restaurant. The man who is supposedly your handler. The man who in that meeting went by Agent Exeter. We also know two other things from last episode. One, Neil remembered the name Exeter. He heard it through a phone line in Michelle Van Fitz's apartment while he was trying to avoid seeing Roger murder Michelle Van Fitz. Plausible deniability on the witness stand. (laughs) And I forget the second one already because that first one was cool. Um, (laughs) What were the two things? There was the Exeter thing. Oh, and then uh, Lyra Westover. Well, there was the, the, the play, right? We went back to the play and then we mentioned to Roger that Lyra Westover had an episode. Right, and Roger oh. revealed to everybody that he had done an operation with a Dr. Lyra Westover and that he saw her in the night floors. And uh, yeah, so a lot of weird things happening. Roger even said specifically out there in that parking lot, there's something weird going on in this hospital. <laughs> and you guys get back to uh, the Ritz Carlton. You see this image on screen. Tell me about what happens. Who's on the computer? Is it Vicky? Is it Bobby? Who's on the computer? Who's looking this up? Um, I bet Bobby's on the computer. I think All right, Bobby computer sees this. I'm assuming everybody's kind of like looking over his shoulder. Go. Uh, we're 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 um, searching for Barbus. We, we see his face. Oh, this shit! This looks like Exeter. That is. It looks like Exeter. That is Exeter. Unmistakable. What the fuck? We gotta call him. We have to call him. I mean, well, fuck. Well, now we know his... If he wanted us to know, he would have told us. He doesn't want us to know. But this yes. exists. But he, why? He, he might have answers, though. Yeah, but he's not gonna... F- fuck. This Unless is... Unless he's playing us. What do, we know, what do we know about Exeter? Nobody's worked for him before. Nobody knows him, right? Now's the time to tell the truth. No. No. Nothing. Me neither. Uh, First time I met him. I sit down on the edge of my bed and I pull out my my notebook as it, as this like conversation is happening and I flip to the the note about it and I tell them that when I was on the phone I heard I heard the name Exeter and I like I I point out the word like written from you know two thousand nine. Uh, 2009. No, or 1995. 90, 1995. Yeah, I'm like pointing at it. Exeter. You heard that? I did. What else? What else did you hear? That was all. <sighs> doesn't. That doesn't make any sense. As you're reading this, Bobby, it's just a brief bio uh, and just says that uh, he is a a detective with the Massachusetts State Police with a uh, with a doctorate um, and that he uh, is um, 
Uh, oh, it also has an email uh, for him, you know, with the Massachusetts State Police. And, um, yeah, it just it just says, uh, yeah, it's pretty, like, pretty bare. Pretty bare. <clears throat> okay, what if we email him? What if we don't it does, call Also, him? it does say 20 plus years of service. It does say for 20 plus years he's been with the oh. Massachusetts State Police. 20 Damn. plus years. Oh, wow. So he would have just started around the time that we had our our, opera- our first operation. But how oh, would he 20, have... 20 plus years. I guess it could have been... Well, you're probably right, yeah. <sighs> None of this makes sense. None of the times make sense. We need to... We need to contact him. But I don't why? know if we should contact him as a Why, hammer. why, why do we need to contact him? We need to oh. talk to him about Westover. All of us have lives outside of this. He does as well. I don't think it's important. I hate to say this, but uh, Messiah's got a point. If he is Delta Green, he's probably got covers that he has to maintain, so... We, we may he not. didn't. He didn't cover, though. He came. If we are to believe this script, this piece of paper that I I remember, I have, we have a, we have it somewhere. It's in one of my files. He came to Doctor Richard Dallin while Doctor Dallin was overseeing the care of Doctor Westover. He came not under an alias. Yeah, I mean, he, this is... He's personally involved in this. He's <clears throat> yeah. not forthcoming about it. So there is... There's some kind of conflict of interest here happening. This is definitely something that we need to look into. Yeah. But perhaps... Messiah is right in... We don't go about it by calling him out. Maybe we contact him through his email, his professional email. We say something else. We just lie. We need to meet with him. We got your kids. Don't let Messiah get off the keyboard. Don't let Messiah use it. Give it back. Delete, 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 delete. delete. If you don't Um, have any children, we have your brother. (laughs) If you don't have a brother, (laughs) that's the the heading. (laughs) Um, So what do we want to? We want to email him. We can't. We, uh, we. You're right. We can't confront him outright. That. That definitely, I mean, I tried confronting that guy in the hospital and it didn't work out, right? So let's try something else. Do we have if no we, way of contacting him? No, we could call him, but I'm saying we shouldn't call him as He our gave handler. you a phone. He Remember? Is, a weird, right. like, yeah. satellite phone. Yeah. I don't know phone, why yeah. we shouldn't just talk to him. Yeah, okay, we should okay. just call him. Let's just call yeah. him. Okay, call him. What do we say, though? Where are we going to say, hey, we know your like, name? Hey, what the fuck? You, we know you talked to Westover. Let's get a meeting. Visitor. Let's get a face-to-face. Yeah, to I think face. we should make a meeting. I think we he's going to face. hang up on us. Okay. This shit has come to light. Okay. <laughs> Let's we call. at the Apple Store. Maybe we let Roger. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we let Roger, we'll let Roger the handle this yeah. call. Or we'll, we'll, let him, we'll let him handle the, the interrogation for sure. Meet us at the fan. Apple Store or we got your kids. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> No threats to the kids. You keep bringing the kids up. Don't bring the kids up. <laughs> Please. The rest uh, is good. So, yeah, we call we call him and we ask him to meet. We ask him to meet. We pull um, up the antenna on the satellite yeah. phone. We have to do Sat- it in code, though. Yeah. Like, um, Roger's calling. What are you dialing? Beep, 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 beep. The number. <laughs> nice question, Joe. The number. <laughs> well, he gave us his card. Yeah. Or no, he didn't. Right. Oh no, he gave us There's, a piece of paper. I think it was a, the number was loaded in the phone, right? No, he gave us a piece of paper. He did. Roger oh, okay. left and he didn't get it, right? That's right. No, he gave you a business card for Doctor Dallin. Oh right. Oh, uh, I'm mixing that up. I'm mixing that up. That he told he told you a number. He told us a number. That you have to dial. What's right. the number? Yeah. Hold on, let me look. What let me go back to my your notes. What's the number? Somebody use your notes. I'm looking. 616. That is correct. Just use your notes. Sorry. You take great notes and then you never Hold look on. at them. There's so many. 616. Yeah. And we're, if you remember, uh, Messiah, we're called A cell. This is the, he's A cell. So when you call. So you. you beep. So, all right. So first you got to power it on. Right? So you power it on and it Quiet. makes these weird three I'm beeps. It's like, beep, 
beep, beep. It's <laughs> this weird, like, weird vibe. You hit the thing, the thing, beep, 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 for 616, and you put it to your ear, and you start hearing this. And you hear a... As if something was picked up, but there's just kind of like dead air. And it's just like... But you feel like someone is on the other end of it. All right. This is a cell. The beacon has been lit. And the apple does not fall far from the tree. Internet computers. And he hangs up. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking, I was wondering if you are just going to say Exeter. <laughs> how is he, how is he going like, to understand he hangs up. that yeah, message? Actually, yeah. <laughs> Vicky is just staring. He'll know. I don't think he will. We never talked about any of that. He knows Beacon <laughs> Street, Apple Store. That's where all the internet computers are. <laughs> we'll meet there. The last place anyone will suspect. <laughs> then we'll get some clam chowder next door. <laughs> some good old-fashioned Baltimore clam chowder. <laughs> okay. Uh, we Okay. We need to all be on the same page when hopefully he shows up after decoding that. He's smart. He's a doctor. What are we going to say when we see him? Who's taking the lead? We say something like, uh, hello, uh, Exeter, or should I say, Dr. Barbus? And then we all point our guns at him. <laughs> Makeshift. Yeah. Uh, let's at do. least first figure out what he knows about Lyra Westover, what his interaction with Lyra Westover was, because he's definitely not holding something back from us. Um, I just just want to say something. Uh, you have no idea who was on that phone. <laughs> yeah, right. If you yeah, transmitted any really, sort of talk, like really that don't actually, know I mean, I you know, it's fun that you up. kind of goof off and do ridiculously <laughs> stupid stuff. But I'm not going to sit here for 15 minutes listening to you plan a conversation that is That's never going to happen. Vicky hands yeah. the phone. Oh, no, there. but but the the thing is. Um, <laughs> I don't want to waste literally everyone's time that is listening to this show. No, uh, I, I did want to. Oh God, what did I just want to say? I did want to say something. If about we call what you, back, can we can we leave a proper just, message saying, "Let us, let's meet." Oh, I just want to be clear on like the time and everything. So mm-hmm. it is, you know, around six, seven o'clock at night right now. Like, like mm-hmm. when are are you going to meet someone? What, you know what I mean? Give me an idea ah, of what's happening in this. Yeah, so let's say let's let's make it for tomorrow morning. Yep. And um, uh, we'll make it at the same place where he, we met at the the restaurant that he organized. Yeah. That way, no muss, no fuss, no confusion. Vicky pushes the phone to Murnau. <laughs> Would you like to make the call? Sure. 616. We'll dial 616. I feel more okay. comfortable with this. <laughs> beep, beep. And. <laughs> you just hear this dead air on the other end. As if uh, you feel like it's been picked up, but nobody's saying anything. Exeter? <laughs> Who is this? This is Murno. Some new information has come to light. We'd like to meet with you face to face. Ask him if I got my message. <laughs> Exeter. Exeter is compromised. Exeter is your target. No and it hangs up. Shit. <laughs> oh, right. fuck. Did we, was that on speaker? We're going to say that was on speaker. <laughs> well, we <laughs> no, we're not going to say that was on <laughs> <Well, laughs> speaker. You can hang up if it's on speaker. <laughs> yeah, the super secret satellite speaker phone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I plug in headphones phones. to it. I'm listening in. <laughs> 
It's like, well. So. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Exeter has been compromised and he's our new target. <gasps> target? <laughs> like they want us to kill him? That's right. We have to find him. Wait, they didn't want us to kill anybody. That's not what this mission is. How can you be sure that line wasn't compromised? Hold on. Everybody, just hold on. This doesn't feel right. Does this feel right to any of you? No. It doesn't Nothing feel ever wrong. feels right to me. I feel wrong. It doesn't feel wrong. Maybe that voice was saying what we all knew. He got in too deep. Exeter set us on this mission. He had some prior knowledge or inter- interaction with Ly- Lyra Westover, and now he has been compromised. Yeah. And if we keep working for him, there's a chance we'll be considered compromised as well. This is how it works. You never know who to trust. I think as of this moment, we are not working for Exeter. We should track him down. Correct. Agreed. Regardless of what is actually happening, he does have information we need. So we should try to find him. Find his house. what to do from there. Where he sleeps. Perhaps his children's school. Well. Yes. Why don't we go back to my original idea of contacting Dr. Elias Barbas as That's, civilians, unrelated. That sounds like a good plan. We need to get some lead on where he is. Maybe well, what should we say? Well, um, I mean, just some lead on where he is. You Googled him and he is a Massachusetts state police officer. Right. We could just go. We could go I mean, to the you, police there's, station. There's a lot of research. I mean, that puts you down a line where there's a lot of specific questions you can ask to, you know, figure out more. Uh, we could literally look up his address, go to his house. That's an option. Right. <clears throat> we could email him. My idea was email him as a civilian. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have information about something. We, you know, we want to report something, whatever. <sighs> Let's do both. We'll find out where he lives, go surveil him, then email him and see what he does. See if there's any movement at his home or wherever he, we think he may be. Vicky looks at her Apple Watch. She has an Apple Watch. <laughs> her Fitbit. An internet watch. <laughs> it's a computer watch. It's, it's computer. new. Oh, right. um, she says it's early. I mean, we could find his address now and, and do a, a early stakeout tonight. I don't know. I'm kind of worried. I'm kind of worried that something's going on and I don't when, know. When we search, uh, can we get more information on Barbus through the internet? Besides his, there wasn't any other information. Excellent besides question, his. Bobby. Do you <laughs> I, look I, at other websites? I will look at other websites. Should I roll um, for it? No, no, it's no. A, well, yeah, give me a computer's roll uh, computer's or a search roll, roll whatever is better, and see um, if you can put your. What, what are you typing in? I'm, uh, I'm typing search. in uh, Elias Barbus Doctor. Like, I guess making it more of a broader search where it's. Or, or actually. That's it, just first, his name, Francis. The, yeah. Elias <laughs> 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 Barbus. Uh, sergeant or like uh, state police. I mean, there's got to be some other information about him. Look up, online. like, a high school, like, where he went to high school or, like, what okay. town. Yeah, just find, like, a yeah. Facebook page or something. Yeah, find yeah. his Facebook. Because yeah. I, mean, find his I Facebook. feel like, is Google functioning? Google's a, Google's a thing now, 2015. It's 2015. Yeah, this it's isn't, got, like, the yeah, dark ages. It should have every page that, or every, every like, hit You guys should be up. able to find out a sh- an incredible amount of information yes. right. right from your hotel room in, okay. yeah. in 2015. So, so <laughs> we, we can find his like, address. Bobby just can't <laughs> type it in. He just yeah. can't figure it out. I'm just like, this computer I asked what he typed to the search and he said Elias Barbus doctor uh, he keeps typing typing doctor and I'm like Bobby you have to type the name you can't just google doctor Elias Barbus uh, I've so got a man. definition here of the word doctor. <laughs> Elias Barbus, and then everything with his name should pop up, right? Like Elias Barbus, quote, how to kill. Quote, quote. Oh, interesting. <laughs> where, where is he? Uh, all right, so go ahead and give me a quick roll. Okay. I'm rolling, uh, uh, I got a 66 
and that is against my computer science, which is 40. Crap. Okay. 41. Um, yeah. So you're typing in multi, uh, multiple searches, right? <laughs> like if you were actually looking for somebody, you might type uh, Elias Barbus address, uh, right. Eli- Elias Barbus state police address, Elias Barbus state police phone number, Elias Barbus state police news. Eli- you know what I mean? Like over and over and over again. And uh, when you do that, you see his name pop up in in articles over the years that are involved uh, with b- news reporting, uh, police reporting from uh, crime reports and stuff like that, where he might be quoted in an article as uh, analyzing this or that or saying this or that. Uh, he, uh, you know that you notice that he does not have a Facebook page, that he does not have a Twitter profile. That he does not have, uh, he doesn't have anything that pops up on YouTube. There's no, like, interviews of him or anything like that. Um, In fact, after a while, you find that you don't find out much uh, from just basic internet searches. You may have to, you may have to dig deeper in another way using some of your other resources. Would Um, I have access to any kind of medical kind of database Ooh. That where I could find out like where he went to school, if I could know, know, find someone who knows him personally, like where he does a residency, or some kind of network that I can access. Um, he is, uh, yeah, we can say that you you can find out relatively easily that he is uh, that he has a doctorate in history, and he is not oh, a medical doctor. Okay. Uh, so where did he do his residency? Strange. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, also, so Vicky, as a postal inspector, like she doesn't have limited jurisdiction in New York State. Like she has worldwide jurisdiction. So could she use her own search database to look him up and see if anything pops up that way? She could go to Brazil. <laughs> okay, it's not it's worldwide. Throwing me off. I, like, I was trying to take a sip too, Troy. Like I don't know why. <laughs> There's nowhere you can run. There's nowhere you can run. Wherever the mail you has to post. You can't escape the mail. Nationwide. It's hard because I was looking up. I was like trying to Google jurisdiction, and some a little like blurb on Google is like our jurisdiction is worldwide, and I read it as I was talking and, I, and then I went it's not though it's the United States Postal Inspection Service I guess they mean for like international mail as well but anyway yeah it, it, it makes me think of the kingdom starring Jamie Foxx right like that was the FBI had to mm. go operate in like Saudi Arabia or something right. like that it was an incident yeah. overseas and it was actually the FBI was dealing with it I think that that's rare but I do think it happens that these federal agencies have to do international stuff and so I think I think there are probably instances where the uh, Postal Inspector Service does that but through um, an agreement with a, whatever country it is how just about you stop to... bragging about how worldwide you are and just find the address of a <laughs> Massachusetts police officer yeah, yeah there it, seems like it can't be some... that hard it can't be yeah. that hard uh, <laughs> Speaking of postal inspector as well, the other thing uh, that I just want to throw out there, um, uh, again, guys, it's like just uh, on the, you have the evidence board, Rem- you know, on the evidence board, there is uh, also, you know, uh, another piece of evidence tied to Agent Exeter on there besides his picture. So just keep that in mind as well. And um, any guesses? Richard Richard Zialoni. We look up Richard Zialoni. You re- remember you received oh. this thing in the mail, presumably from him, presumably before the patients even went. Missing. Yeah. So let me you know, let so, Vicky crack her knuckles on this one. This is her shit. <laughs> That's so, right. This is like your oh, shit. Yeah, this is her <laughs> shit. She is going to now. She didn't even think about it before because it came originally from Delta Green in her mind. And she was so excited. She was so excited. She just like, do a mish. She's going to pull out her own... We'll put it uh, right in the center there. Her bag where she had her thing, her um, uh, invitation, and its original envelope. And now she's going to like get down to business and examine the postage. It was sent through FedEx, you said, right? It was sent through FedEx, yeah. Oh, seems like Joe did this on purpose because I am the USPS and he <laughs> yeah. sent it through a third-party carrier. Oh. Unreliable, 
worse rates, no insurance. Um, she's like spitting on the FedEx packaging. But she's going to instead look at the um, the stationery. I mean, she's still really, really intricate, has intricate knowledge of forgeries and mail fraud. She's going to look at the stationery. The lettering is strange. She already noted that like things are not even, um, is it embossed? You know, is there any, she's like peeling the, she sees like the corners a little peeled. She's like getting on her gloves and she has her little heat okay, gun. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> you just said 17 different things. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's go one at a time here. Okay. Uh, you said stationary. So yes. let's say you have experience with this stuff. I told you that it's it's not regular paper. Like this, right. it's fancy. It seems like fancy schmance. So I would say with your knowledge of this kind of stuff, your extensive knowledge as a postal inspector, you know that this is like, a, like luxury paper um, and that it is uh, hand-pressed, that it is high quality stuff mm. um it seems like it was that it's unique that like you couldn't buy this in a store that somebody had to kind of like make this like a craftsman or an artisan a paper artisan basically mm. uh because it, it's so detailed if you look there's little ri like ridges all around the outside of the area where the writing is yeah if you look closely at the invitation like zoom in on it we can put it up on screen too. Like there are a lot of details on this oh, thing. Yeah. So you can kind of dig into that. <coughs> um, yeah. And uh, it's textured too, right? Like it's stamped in yes, the foil, it's the textured gold foil and everything. Is you would also probably naturally look for a mark if it was a craftsman or a company, you know, that made it and you don't see one. So you don't notice any sort of imprint or signature of uh, a company or a logo or anything like that. Yeah, she's like, she's putting on like a magnifying, she has like a, almost like miniatures, people who do miniatures, they have like the magnifying glasses with a little light on it, and she like flips it down. Okay, I know you're doing this in the hotel room right then and there, and everybody's watching this, mm -hmm. and everybody's standing around. Okay, so okay. I she, just like, want to get the picture right. Struck Roger's going down to the bar. <laughs> Um, Bobby's over her shoulder and asks, uh, has anybody tried that phone number yet? Has, have we called that? What? She looks up, her eyes are huge. <laughs> the, phone <number>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the phone number on the on the card, has, has anybody called that? I, I don't remember if that's, is that for the restaurant that we met in or? I assume, but here, yeah. Um, the 617 number is a Boston number. Right, yeah, try it. Why not? Let's give it a try. Um, okay. We're going to call it on All the... Right, so uh, Vicky bends over this invitation with these uh, examining glasses, the magnifying glasses and a, and a light, maybe even like a UV light or something. She carries this kind of stuff. Sweet. And then uh, Bobby just like on his cell phone puts in that number and brr, brr, click Gateway Bridges Restaurant. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, this is the thank location. Thank you. <laughs> this is the location. Uh, this is the restaurant that's on Potash Street. Yes, that's correct. Our address is 9011 Potash Street. Exeter! Okay. Exeter! Thank you. <laughs> is there, I'm sorry? Is, is there an Exeter there? An Exeter? <laughs> Why? I, I'm sorry, a guest? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Bobby is just was a restaurant. I'm so, I'm tells sorry, you, the you can see stand a chance. You can really up. see how he became a head of station in the CIA. It really, <laughs> damn, he's good. Damn. <laughs> he's good. My unassuming demeanor that throws people off guard. <laughs> Way to go, um, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it's just a restaurant. <laughs> uh, so, uh, all right, uh, Vicky is Sydney. Looking... You look at this. Look at look look at it yeah. yourself and see if there's anything that stands out to you. Um, I will. <clears throat> mm. There are there are a few things. Okay. Um, if... With her magnification on, she notices these almost like hair like squiggles at the corners of the paper uh she can't tell if it's an ink like an ink drag of the pen and she wants to like almost pick at it to see if there's like a hair trapped in the like pressing of the paper and she's like is it she's like got tweezers 
Um, no, there's no hair pressed into the paper. It is just like a small indentation. Squiggle. Yeah, it's but so as strange. but as you're picking at it, you definitely notice that it is like double layered. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking. There's something underneath it. Yeah, there's the yeah. corner. The corner's she peeling. Says, she says, "Murn out, murn out. Get me um a hair dryer." I go into my bathroom and acquire one. Okay, pull out a hair dryer. Yeah. Um, Low heat setting, and she's trying to lightly, she sees the corner is already a little bit off the edge. She gets her nail in there. She's still got her red nails, and she is lightly trying to, like, peel the glue, the seam glue between the two pressings of the paper. Okay. Okay. You start to peel back this this double layer of paper, and there's nothing really between them. They just kind of easily come apart. But when you get to the central area where the invitation is within this sort of beautiful stock paper, whatever, uh, hand-pressed paper frame. Probably Astro Pache, uh, heavy uh, cardstock. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Pache. Sid. Nice. That sounded real. That sounded mm-hmm. real. That legit. sounded real. Oh, it's like, probably yeah. a crane product. Probably a crane paper product. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> probably crane. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Good callback, Skip. Mm. <laughs> you peel back this paper, and as you get to the central piece of paper, you see that there's nothing between the two sides of the frame, but when you split it apart, there is another piece of paper behind the central invitation paper. Oh, what? Underneath. Uh, oh, what? my God. You see another piece of, like, worn paper that's a different style of paper <sighs> underneath the invitation. Gloves what? on. She's going to, like, separate it off and then pick it up and try to slide out what's behind or, or feel for it. Okay, so you have your like your little tweezers and you grab this other piece and you're still kind of using the hair dryer. You don't want to make anything rip. And you start to peel apart another piece of paper. And sure enough, there's something else under here. I'll drop this it on the evidence board. So fucking cool. Oh, 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 oh my god. What no. is happening? Why? Oh God. <laughs> oh, so there's no. another piece God. of paper under the evidence board that is written in it seems to be text that's scribbled in like ballpoint pen where the original invitation it kind of has like a almost a cal- calligraphy vibe this uh is totally different writing and just seems to be written in a blue ballpoint pen with some sort of symbol in the bottom right corner yeah, that looks like almost like a Knights Templar reminiscent of something like that. This is something early medieval. This is so weird. The text it, says the text says our London business is good, but Vienna and Berlin are quiet. Mr. D. Lloyd has gone to Switzerland and I hope for good news. He will be there for a week at 1496 Zermatt Street and then goes to turn and or sorry to Turin Turin. and Turin and Rome and will join Colonel Perry and uh, arrive at at Athens, Greece, November 27th or December 2. Letters here should be addressed King James Boulevard 3580. We expect Charles E. Fuller Tuesday, Dr. L. McBlade and Robert Unger Esquire left on the YX Express tonight. There's a lot going on in there. And then there's a sigil, a symbol, a, a, a seal of some kind in the bottom right corner. And I'll say this. You guys have seen this symbol before. Yeah, that does look familiar. It rings yeah. a bell, but I'm not just going to give it to you. You'll have to see if uh, if your characters can remember 20 years back. Can I do an art roll to see if I can place it? Uh, yeah, do an occult our, roll. Do we have access to our old board. Is that still there? Uh, well, yeah, I, I can bring you to the old board for a moment if you'd like. But there's uh, so I can put you so there. I'm putting you on the old board. Uh, yeah. But the everything on the old board is in your journal, so you can always kind of click on that and just right. look at individual things. Yeah, I was just seeing if there was a picture that. Was yeah, I can that. say that there's nothing on this evidence board as of now. That uh, that was there before, but there's good reason for that. All right, I. Oh, this is something from the night floors, right? Um, 
No. Uh, 004 under something. Wow. On an occult Ooh. check? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Neil, with a striking memory, you remember that this seal was on a small piece of brown paper that was affixed to the wall. And when Vicky removed it from the wall, you heard this ear piercing like clang. And that was when Roger was in the back room and Roger, you saw a homeless man with a snake over his shoulder at the same instant. And a cab leaned on a horn on the guy and it melded with the sound of that loud that like everybody else heard and it became maybe it was a car horn but if it was it was an unnaturally loud car horn is this all ringing a bell yeah Yeah, totally so Neil remembers this moment and it was that symbol you also see uh, on closer examination that it um, there's letters around the outside of it yeah P-U-R S-O-N person (laughs) Is that the rest of person? <laughs> that what is terrible Could spelling. Be. You recognize person, P U R S O N, as the name of a demon. is like oh, a, a so this is an occult symbol from like an ancient demonology sort of uh john so this is some cult why but why is this hidden in the invitation yeah, to why yeah. did exeter give this to us did we all, did give it to us do we all have these invitations with us can we sorry real quick um uh neil you need to roll a sanity check Sure do. One that oh, I will wow. surely fail. <laughs> uh, no, actually I don't. It's 16 under oh, 37. Nice. Heck yeah. Nice. Holding down the fort. That's great. Um, did we all bring our, our invitations? Can we can we see if we have other? We could say that Vicky it? takes a look at everybody after finding uh, this. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you tell me, Francis. Okay, yes. We, you we, know, like, it, the kind of th- it's the kind of thing where you kind of have to keep yourself honest, but it's like, did you bring it with you? You know, mm. like, do you think Bobby did? Um, uh, I think he would have. I think he would have kept it. Then I'm cool with it, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... Uh, maybe yeah, I feel um, like you guys can all do these examinations as you want. Let's, okay. let's, let's go to Roger for a second if he went oh. downstairs. Um... <laughs> Meanwhile, Vicky, I'm going to come back to you with a uh, one of forensics roll in the meantime. So uh, you have forensics, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So I'll come back to you uh, and let me know how that works out. Yeah. What's Roger? He's just finishing uh, a, a small glass and he puts it down and motions to the bartender like. And he'll come. He'll come over and he pours another drink for you. Can you smoke in here? No, sorry, man. You can't smoke in here. Sorry. Uh, there, you can go right down this uh, hall here and then find the door to the outside and you can have a smoke right out there. Hey, go socks. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> Who are you a fan of? The uh, Baltimore Orioles. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Eddie kind of laughs and turns away. Roger stares at him a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's just like laughing talking to another customer I was just sitting there um, kind of taking it all in Roger's the thing that's re, like uh, preoccupying him at the moment is this idea that um, time is meaningless and at every uh, sort of step deeper into these uh, this investigation it seems more and more like all of time is overlapping you know it took a while for Roger to realize that something was wrong when he came 
back into this to realize that there may have been another something, a part of him. He has memories that he doesn't know why he has these memories. But now it's he realizes that this this investigation itself there is there there is there is an issue with time where everything is happening sort of simultaneously and uh separate and it's making him feel crazy and so he feels uh he's like just trying to ground himself with alcohol there's a woman sitting across from you middle-aged uh, red hair, maybe a little too much makeup, sprayed. Her hair is kind of like poofed up. And she uh, has a little cup of brown liquor in front of her. And she's across this like sort of, uh, let's say it's like a like a rectangular bar. And you're near one corner and she's kind of on the other side, you know, near the same corner. She looks across the corner of the bar at you. It's just like, Hi. Hi. How you doing? <sighs> fine, fine. You in uh, you in town on business? Um. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Huh. So, uh, first time in Boston? No, 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 no. Oh. You uh, you grew up here or something? Um, no, no, I, uh, East Coast, but not, uh, not this town. Oh, where on the East Coast? Baltimore. Oh, she takes a sip of her drink. I'm from Chicago originally, but, uh, out here for a conference, the BCEC. And she's just getting nothing from Roger. <laughs> just like looks down at her drink, looks around, and gives up. Jeez. And we'll go back upstairs. <laughs> Damn, Damn, Roger. She gives up. Damn it! I was waiting for her to push. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can always cut back to like drug Roger. <laughs> it's like right next to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll go back upstairs to uh, Bobby once again at this too. How about a forensics roll from Vicky? Oh right, yes. Oh yeah. Oh, she was so into the Roger scene. <laughs> uh, she wa- she wanted to know what's going on down there. <laughs> I don't blame her. Um. What is my forensics? I got a 31 under 51. Oh, nice. Okay, so there's two things that happen uh, with that role. Oh, One is you recognize this writing on the underneath thing uh, as a request exemplar, which is something that is that you have used multiple times in your job to identify handwriting. So it's basically you have a suspect write a specific series of kind of nonsense that uses like every letter of the alphabet, every number of the alphanumeric and every like uh, punctuation in a certain way in a certain amount of time. And it is used for handwriting analysis so that their handwriting can be compared to evidence. And it's something that you've done like over and over again. And you immediately believe that this could be that. Whoa. Okay. Oh, wow. So this is like nonsense. nonsense. (laughs) That's great. Okay. So this is like Laura Mipsum. Yeah. Vicky tells tells that this is the quick brown fox. Um, (sighs) Vicky tells them in the room. Hold on, hold on, hold on. As they're like, you know, trying to research like uh, Unger Esquire and right. Vicky's like I'm typing in all these names. This is yeah. um You might have even seen this exact script right. used before. That's what I'm wow. thinking. Like um, Laura Mipsum, yeah. Vicky says, This is not this is nothing. This it's something, but it's nothing. This is not a letter to anybody. This is not information. This this is a request em- exemplar. This is a, a writing test. This is this is to cross compare handwriting analysis. This might have been, I mean, this might have been Exeter trying to 
send us information to cross compare. We have to hold on to this. We need to take this to Dorchester and cross compare this to handwriting to, to Richard Dallins. But also, this could be this could be Doctor Barbas. This could be his handwriting used against him if he's compromised. This could be. Why is the seal on here? I don't know what the seal is. Neil? This is hidden in there. What? Neil, I mean, you, it you seems said... like Exeter was like trying to smuggle this to yes. us somehow without <laughs> the knowledge of his. DG. Oh, anyone over him, you know? Is I'm not in the room, but this is more. I'm just having an investigator chat here. The, yes. the, the log book. <laughs> Is does everyone sign into the logbook? I wish Roger was here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm talking to the handler. I feel like Roger would say something like, <sighs> I like everybody... that we can all call him Roger now. <laughs> does everybody yeah, sign into the logbook? Yeah, everybody signs yeah. into that logbook. The so guests, may, yeah. So, what I'm thinking is that maybe. Um, check it against Exeter the- yes, knows exactly. that someone was like going to pose as him. So if we check the handwriting of Barbus against oh. this handwriting, okay, then we know that it, we know we that it's not it, the real. We can check it against the the invitation too, right? Vicky invi- proposes that as her own idea since Roger is downstairs and says <laughs> it to the group and gets accolades. Well, galore. she knows Roger so well. <laughs> yeah, she, right. She knows probably, how he thinks. The telepathy <laughs> well, between she us. Said, remember, uh, okay. And then let's, uh, that's fine. That's a good idea for the future. But for right now, you said that this is, um, you said, what is this symbol? Uh, oh, Neil, yeah, you're the Neil. only one that knows this. Like, do, do you share this? Yeah, yeah. I t- tell, I remind everyone what happened when, when we saw this before and what happened when we messed with it, that moment. And the second right. you say that, you just hear, as the fire alarm goes off uh, in the room slash the hotel, you don't really know, but a fire alarm begins to blare. What do you do? Pack it shit. up. Pack it up. Pack we it up. Get pack our it up. shit. Get get everything. Get all the uh, details we got. Carry okay. everything. Out. Um, let's get out of here. You start We've packing up all your stuff. Yeah. I mean, Neil, like, what about all your clothes? What about everything you brought? Is that staying in there or? Well, that's Mur now. We're not staying here. Yeah. <laughs> but Mur now, you can figure out what you want to do with that stuff. We're taking I mean, the important I, stuff. I get my notes and my medical bag. All right, and you but guys just, like, move out into the hallway with, with at least that. And then Roger in the bar, you see this woman looks up, and the, the alarm is going off in the lobby of the hotel. He calls the bartender the fire over. alarm. Uh, put it on 314. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he Wait, wait, up. hold on a second, sir. Hold on a second. I think it's probably just a uh, false alarm. Let, let, let us check. Just just, just relax. Everyone just relax. Everybody just relax. And then within like five or six seconds, it just like turns off. And you hear this, uh, this person comes into the lobby. I'm so sorry, everyone. Um, our fire alarm was tripped somehow. It was an accident. Uh, pro- apologize for the disturbance. There is no fire. There is no smoke condition. Thank you. I uh, please uh, go back to having a good time. We apologize for the for the confusion. Then we flip upstairs, and you guys are in a hallway, you know, moving toward the stairwell, and it just stops. And you see multiple people are in the hallways, like looking around at each other, like question, questioning. We're looking around. Does anybody seem familiar? Anyone in there in the hallway? Like did, no, all no. just yeah, no, you this don't recognize thing any is faces. Like, it's like a car alarm or something. It's some sort of security system. That there's image the symbol yeah did you touch it and that went off or it just no we just but just like talking about it we talked about it we talked about it the same similar sort of thing happened like do we see anything else strange like in that that dude with a snake yeah, do you see <laughs> no, there's no dude with a snake no. and people and then like within if you're there for 30 seconds a uh, bellman comes walking you know into the hallway and it's just like sorry everyone uh, there was a false alarm with the fire alarm it seemed an electrical short uh, there is no fire there is no smoke condition everything's safe in the hotel you can go back to your rooms thank you very much sorry for the confusion alright let's go back to the room but you okay. know you yeah. did it 
Yeah, yeah. this is some we, we protocol, <laughs> some kind of contingency, something, we... there's some magic here. Can I, can I make an unnatural check? Ooh. See if I can yeah. pull sure. on anything sure. based on what, I mean, I, I barely have any unnatural, but. Oh shit! Uh, uh, oh no, I have zero. But I'll check it. <laughs> What'd you roll? I, 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 I rolled. I, I, I rolled a. I rolled a double oh eight. I gave it. A, I got a shot. Whoa. Oh wow. Okay. Man, you I, gave it a good shot. I have yeah. a natural. I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll for a natural since we're doing. Oh shit! I got double zero. I have a six. What? What'd oh you get? God. Oh my god. Oh my god. No! He's been taken! <laughs> oh my god. They don't want us to know. We we lost you. You probably I, every, I, everybody heard you say it but us. What did you say? I, got, I, I we we I got a double zero. Uh, that uh, and to, against the six. Oh, you got a six. Hundred. Yeah. Wait, three oh, zero? Oh, you no. need to roll two die. Uh, yeah, I rolled the uh, the two and I got two zeros. Is that a hundred? That's a hundred. Three Ooh. zeros total? No, no, no! I, I rolled two die, two yeah. of the uh, two d ten, yes, and I got that's zero. That's a hundred. That's yeah, a hundred. That's hundred. Damn it! I was like, oh, I got under six. But no, it's a hundred. God damn it! All right, you got the worst possible result. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the crap. Okay, moving and on. The demon took you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys sort of sheepishly return to this room, mm. and um, Bobby, did you say you brought another invitation? Yes, I brought my invitation. Uh, Do you want to see if the same thing is in your invitation? Yes, Maybelline. Have a look at this one. All right. He hands it to Maybelline. Okay. She yeah lays it out and does the same thing, searching for the same things. Okay, you do the same things. All the info is the same, and the paper underneath it's the it's all the same, except upon close examination for you, because you are an expert at this. You can tell two things. One, the underneath paper that is kind of the the request exemplar, the handwriting analysis, is a, it's a different, like it's written again. It's all the same words in all the same order, but it was written again. It's not a copy of another one, right? But it's the same handwriting. The same I handwriting. Okay. Same under, okay. Wow. At the same time, you also notice when you compare really closely that the calligraphy of the actual invitation is slightly different on each one, just slightly different. Hmm. So you know that this isn't printed. This it's seems to be handwritten. And you also notice that it is extremely like, uh, the, the, not extremely, but it is somewhat uneven and with your background, you would be able to tell that the person that was writing the calligraphy was trembling. Oh. That's what it looks like, because it, it's fucked up. Yeah. Like, I yeah. can really, like... That's why there's the squiggle, like, the... Like, they're kind shaking. Of, yeah. Yeah. And the, 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 the letters are, like, they're drawn in a very... Uh, kind of okay. flourish, but they're all out of proportion. Like in, kind of childish. In Vicky's yeah. knowledge then, and this might be too big of a question, and that's okay, does this appear to be written under duress or by somebody who might have like a tick? Is it somebody who could have like Parkinson's, for, for example, or a tremor? Yeah, or is it written under duress? I think she would know when someone writes like a hostage note, their handwriting differs in a way where someone is telling them to write something um, the breaks are different. The spacing is different. If they're shaking because they're scared, um, would she have any idea which way this leans? Uh, I think that's a little specific. I think you okay. got you yeah, to give me a roll. A yeah. So, so what's what's the, <laughs> the what's office. the skill you would use here? <laughs> Watch your fucking mouth, skid. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> uh, you watch it. <laughs> Tell um, us what you see, wizard. <laughs> I think she would do. I think she would do her. Uh, I want to do my art forgery, but it's less than my forensics. So I think maybe I'll do forensics because she is analyzing it. She's not determining if it's... She already found out that it was written in a strange way. Um, so I think forensics. Fuck me. Uh, God damn it. Damn. 53 above 51. Oh. Yeah, so whether they're naturally trembly or we're under duress, you can't really tell. Rats. Okay. But that's just I have, that's I have just forensics the... too. Can I give it a shot? 
Yeah, I tell uh, Murnau. Um, sure. Uh, nope. Huh, okay. Welp. She tells the group that as well. Um, uh, Bobby, do you have forensics? I don't. I have zero. Okay. Zero. Yeah, yeah you're I not really like a however, crime scene investigator. <laughs> yeah. Just, Excuse me. Just a CIA guy. <laughs> I have my my invitation. Yes. I oh, produce yeah. my invitation and give it to Vicky. Okay. Shh. Yep, same process. Same process, and yeah, you see all the same, all the same details. Uh, nothing same details. Stands out. Yeah, nothing stands out except that they're all different. All yeah. three are all handwritten, you know, and, uh, but nothing uh, major is different between. And the, the three calligraphy, of them. I would presume, presume is the same person, same handwriting. They're just unique because they're all handwritten. Uh, yes, that they're not printed. Yeah. Right. So, so are we saying, or can we discern whether or not it's like two different people? One person wrote this, the inv- invitation. One person wrote the um, the sheet. The little interesting. Correct. That is the analysis that you are, are come to. Is that yeah. the okay. same person wrote the invitation on all three, and a different same person wrote the request exemplar and all three? Oh so wow! Weird. It's okay. Very strange. Okay. Vicky, Vicky says we need Roger's invitation. I mean, well, fuck it. <laughs> Roger? Oh wait, we know his name is Roger. So yeah. it would be kind of fun if at at the bar, like if this was written, Roger just like pulls out his invitation, and starts fucking with it. <laughs> <laughs> he's lighting it. He's like he's burning like, it with a lighter. Yeah, he's just like <laughs> turning it over and burning over. He like spills his drink. He's like mopping up a <laughs> oh, spill. With a, he's thinking about Exeter too, and plays yeah. it. maybe maybe he just starts like doing it haphazardly without the the finesse that Vicky does. Does he find anything? Yeah, he finds the same same paper behind it. A huge clue. Oh. You found alone at the bar. Can't wait to tell the others about this clue that I found. You also, <laughs> I mean, on examining it, give me a roll, like a, uh, a what would it would be for you? I don't know if it's forensics. You probably don't have that, but like a search roll search or room. something that uh, for you to examine it closely if you're you're examining closely. Heavy machinery. <laughs> <laughs> hand-to-hand combat yo oh i wish i rolled a three. Oh, i have a two and unnatural oh. that wasn't what I was gonna roll. but i mean that is certainly enough for my 25 search okay a three under 25 for search yeah we'll say you alone at the bar noticed something that no one else seemed to notice not even vicky uh, well, she was she was so focused on the calligraphy and the the tremoring and the was this written against somebody's will? She didn't notice that there seemed to be dots on the paper that uh, are not associated with like the dot of an eye, uh, but they're over some of these letters. If you look closely, oh, you should be green, able to see it. The little green dot, like over the E and King oh, James. Oh, you're right. Is that what you're talking about? They're like uh, little, like pinkish. No, no, no. Sorry, in the invitation, the invitation, yeah. the invitation, oh, oh. not the letter. It's oh, yeah. So there's one over the P. H- there's one over the M. Oh. One over the L. H E. And the L. L. P. Help. Help me. Help me. Oh my God. <laughs> Help me. Oh, so Exeter is. He is compromised. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it's under and duress. And Roger realizes this sitting at the bar. Wow. How did oh, I not notice that? that? Help oh, me. Oh, my God. Help me. <laughs> I. He throws back his drink, and then what does he do? It's a uh, big kiss to Miss Chicago. <laughs> Dips her smooch. over like that. Yeah. <laughs> like the <laughs> sailor in Times Square. Yeah. Like yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> he just won the World War II. I gotta go see friends about an invitation. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he just he downs it and uh, makes his way to the elevator. Okay, so a second later, Roger walks into the room uh, after you guys have sort of you know piece these details together trembling handwriting same person writing but two different people writing etc um and he busts uh, his way in help me what What? what's wrong are you hurt this invitation look 
There's little dots above these letters, and it spells out, help me. What? And Vicky looks closer, and she's like pissed. She didn't oh, catch it she before. Must be so pissed. She, yeah, yeah. she was like impressing everybody in the room uh, and like appealing it back. And she's just like in her head. She's like, fucking god damn it. Yeah. And she's Roger like, of all people. Of she all just people. nods. Um, she goes, um, <clears throat> I think Roger's. I think um, Messiah is right. Uh. I would assume this is under duress then, the question I posed before I think we have our answer. So what does this mean? Is Exeter the target or is Exeter just compromised? We don't know if Exeter wrote this. These are two different people. You, I assume, uh, Mr. Postal Inspector, you found the secret note within the invitation. Yes. Of course. Right, of course. I found that very quickly with these. <laughs> <laughs> it's trivial child's play. You smell like Jack Daniels. <laughs> Please stay focused. Yeah, so Roger, you are a little drunk uh, because the same reason that I'm going to say, I, I, nobody else told me that they ate. So no, like, we have not. I because would of- say if you haven't eaten, Roger, and you had two drinks, you're a little definitely a little buzz and... <laughs> You guys must be starving. I was yeah. about to say before when we service. when the fire alarm went off, I was thinking as Vicky like, oh, thank God, let's leave and go to a like a diner or something. You guys heard about Anna's Taqueria? Oh, I love Anna's. We should. Uh, a friend of mine told me about Anna's Taqueria. We should get some. We should get some Taqueria <laughs> at this place. That sounds good. I don't think they deliver. Uh, makeshift. Go pick it up. <laughs> we don't I, guess, ha- I guess I'm taking orders. <laughs> Let's what? get our taco order. Right? <laughs> Who wants what? Before we uh, move on with the tacos. investigation, I'll I just order what? room service. I'll get room service for the for the group. Even better. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay, we'll go, we'll get Anna's tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> too late. Too late. <laughs> menu. Um. <laughs> <laughs> We All right, put so, in the order for so room you guys service. order food up to the room, uh, mm-hmm. but it is it's getting late. Um, this this examination of the invite took a while. You're a couple more hours in. It's nine o'clock at night. Everybody's in Neil's room. What's what's the plan? <sighs> Hit a wall. Yeah, Vicky's like rubbing her the bridge between her eyes, um, and she says, "I think um, I'm going to call it a night tonight. If that's okay, I got to head back to um, Cambridge." Um, but I, I think we've made some really good progress and we got to cross, I got to cross analyze this tomorrow with all the log books and everything. So that's my plan. Um, Sounds like a plan. Let's reconvene tomorrow. Head down to the hospital. Yeah. What time? Well, are we doing uh, Elias before that? Are we trying to go to his house? Yeah, you guys also, you got so sidetracked by the invitation, you didn't talk about finding out right. more information on yeah, we can hold off. Look. It's late. I mean, we maybe we put that off. I'm... You called the phone. Us. Neil, you called the phone, and the phone said, uh, Exeter is your target. Right. For right. what that's worth. Right. What was the voice on there? What did it? Was the voice recognizable? No. No. It was weird. It, it, was a it almost sounded voice. like yeah. It was through like yeah. a voice modulator. It sounded really weird. Yeah, like the saw voice, like a monster man. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what? <laughs> Neil says seriously. <laughs> like a monster. Like a monster. It sounded man. weird. Like a monster man. <laughs> that's, that's creepy. No, I think that you did really. Yeah, you, you nailed it. Sometimes. You didn't hear it. I did. Um, it was monster, monster man. man. <laughs> monster man. So I want to do. I mean, it's it's only nine. Neil pops a trucker pill, and he's gonna <laughs> just try to find out with what the information he has, like if there is any any way to find out where he lives. Um. um well, I, mean, I guess we kind of exhausted all that stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, it, like, well, the if you're talking version. about like how you would, yeah, you can't find it on the internet. Because you tried and you couldn't, but you could probably find it out from the police, you know, right. Uh, right. or the, you know, like, do you have access to 
law enforcement material. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I mean, I, Vicky, I think you even yeah. said something like this. Like, you it's, said, "Can I look up Barbus oh, through my yeah I contacts?" Was just gonna, and then that's when yeah. I mentioned the invitation because I forgot you were a postal inspector. Right, yeah. right, right. I mean, can I just search him so in my she's database? Doing a I search. have a lot of addresses. I assume I would be able to find him. Um, you cannot through your databases uh, get any more information than his name and that he's Massachusetts State Police. But with a successful bureaucracy role, uh, you can get someone you know to get you deeper information. I'm on it. Hey, hey, on, hey easy. We didn't say this was CIA yet. Right now, oh, this oh, is sorry. Postal Inspector Service. I missed that part. <laughs> we're, we're routing through there. <laughs> I heard bureaucracy. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Do you have you? You got some bureaucracy, right? Yeah, actually, pretty good bureaucracy. Um, that's a 26 under 60. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So you are able to uh, convince someone to get you the information and they actually let's say they send it to you in short order um uh, but i mean by in short order i mean you get it like an hour later yeah so it's okay. like 10 30 p.m ish you've eaten and are you still there or all four of you still at the ritz carlton yeah uh neil puts on shane on the the hotel TV, <laughs> sitting on the bed, like watching Shane while we're waiting for her information to get back to us. <laughs> what is Shane? It's a cowboy Western. movie, the Western. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the- Shane with Come the back, boy. Shane. Yeah. Come, Come back, back, Shane. Come back, Shane. Come back. I'm gonna go. Um, I can walk to my Airbnb from here. We're on Boston Street. My Airbnb is on Com Ave. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll see you uh, all tomorrow unless anybody else is leaving at the same time as me. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, you look at Vicky and she she looks kind of sad and she's just kind of looking at you. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow at the, uh, at the hospital of death. Wait, all is right. that where you're meeting? You're meeting at the hospital tomorrow? Well, we don't. We still don't have. Uh, Are you exchanging information with each other at all? Like to, to contact <laughs> no. each other when you're not. Right. Right. Stop just asking just so many up. questions. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dog and pony show. Yeah, we give. We exchange all of our phone numbers. Here, stuff here's where my, we're staying. Yeah. Oh, that's. I do that. I'll share I mean, yeah. like my phone number. Yeah, we all know where I'm staying. Right. I'm, Bobby does the same. Shares. It's like okay. I'm staying at this hotel. Blah blah blah. Cool. Um, but we we were still waiting for the info because if we get the info, we're probably going to go surveil Barbus first, right? Well, Roger has left before no. that info comes. <laughs> in. If we're doing that, I thought we were meeting at the hospital because we had moved away from surveilling Barbus. If we're going to surveil Barbus, let's do that first. But we also told the hospital that we'd see them tomorrow. Yeah, so we we're definitely to go going tomorrow. Yeah. It's just whether or not we stop by. Um, if we get any info after that search after that bureaucracy role um they, they, yeah. They get, yeah i'm we getting get, a we hit. at least check the the handwriting sample against the logbook entry for barbus too i mean while yeah. there Definitely. yeah okay so maybe maybe we go to the hospital first and we check that stuff just to get more information before we take it to barbus what do you guys think okay yeah yeah because i mean we still don't know if, I don't think we know anything, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we just have a lot of questions. Yeah. I think we yeah. have to make sure, like, we, we have to have some kind of confidence that we aren't being tracked to Barbas. Right. That's also by true. the higher ups. <laughs> that's right. also true. Now, like, that's, that is one thing. Like, we definitely at this point, I feel like, do not know who to trust. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, so, okay, we'll meet at the hospital. We'll do that. Um, we'll take to, one car. One car to the to hospital. Barbuses and who's ever, did Delta Green supply us a car? No, no, no. So that's no. not being tracked. We leave the no. fucking big phone at the hospital in okay. somebody's car. Yeah. And we take the other car to Barbuses. Good plan. You can use my car. I'll drive. All right. So does only Roger leave? Vicky will leave at the same 
time. Bobby oh. will wait a minute and let them go because there's some weird happening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that. What all? Bobby, sta- Bobby stands up too, and then he just sits back just down. Like, mm, I'll <laughs> see you guys later. So Roger's the elevator, just shape. like pressing the button. And Vicky walks up with her bag. She has her the invitation in it. She's got her laptop in it, and she comes walking up to the elevator. Oh, hey, Maybelline Isotope. Hey, Mitsubishi Cumstone. <laughs> where, uh, where are you staying? Um, I'm in Cambridge. So far. I like it over there. You said you're at a. What? Where were you staying? I'm at, uh, I have a nice little Airbnb. Are you familiar with Airbnb? Actually, yeah, mine's in Airbnb too. Get out of here. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> Bing, <laughs> and the thought? elevator opens. <laughs> <laughs> you guys step into the elevator and it closes behind you. Airbnb. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> Die laughing. Uh, I um, I just want you to know I didn't know that it would be this. Obviously, I mean I, but um, I wasn't really prepared to see you. I just want you to know I didn't plan. I knew. Wait, what? Uh, I don't know. I just felt like I. I just felt like I knew, but I wasn't prepared either. Um, are you doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I met a nice lady at the bar from, from, uh, Bing, and the elevator <laughs> opens in the lobby floor. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. Do you, um, which way are you walking? Where? Uh, I'll walk you back to your Airbnb. How do you get to Cambridge? I'll help you. It can <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of like, kind of like of, puts her arm on his back. He's drunk. He's, he's so drunk. It's she kind like, of a hike. It's not that far. It's not that I'm far. way up on Mass Ave, Calm Ave. Is it calm I have a mess? I have no <laughs> son of a gun. There's My two. phone's dead. There's two. <laughs> <laughs> which, which one is it? Which one? Uh, <laughs> I'll know the building when I see it. Mass Ave and Calm Ave are like really long, Roger. They're like really long. <laughs> Am I in Cambridge? No. <laughs> she starts walking with him down. Okay. So you, la- you leave the hotel and you start walking toward Kamav. We walk through the uh, public gardens. Oh, nice. And we go through here. Um, Do you recognize the statue? Is it on Eastgate? Or are you further down? How's Murray? Murray? <laughs> Sorry. The kid. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. I forgot. You named him Eddie Carlson Murray. Fucking Murray. <laughs> Eddie Murray. Sam. <laughs> um, after Eddie Murray. Sam. I hate when you do that, Roger. It really bothers me. Uh, Sam is fine. Well, oh God, he's good. He's fine. He just, oh, he fucking, he did something stupid. He's at Maryland now. Did I tell you he got into University of Maryland? Did he? Yeah. Had a boy. But he did something stupid and he pissed off an RA already and he's what calling you, uh, me. He's got a. What, what do you do? Do you want me to call somebody? No. Who, who no. do you piss off? Do I need to go talk to somebody? No, I just. He's stupid. He's, you know, he's 18. He was drinking in his room. He said he wasn't drinking. He was partying in his room, but he just. It was his first week there. He pissed off the RA. They have to have a. a, a meeting like a court hearing it's fine everything's gonna be fine I just I just don't want him to I just don't want him to f- fuck up his life no I think sounds like he's a good kid he'll be he'll be alright 
I think this is the street here. I'm up here. Um, I hope yeah, I'm up here. Okay. Can you make it if I... Uh, to hang out with me for a couple minutes, just in case. Okay. And now it's uh, like almost midnight. It's like I'll, walking. Uh, and, uh, and you get, you hear like a... Badunk. Uh, on your phone, and you see that you got an email from your contact at the uh, Postal Inspector Service with information on Barbus. Oh, I just got the um, the address. For what? Uh, for Barbus. Oh, look, um, I can look at it later. Sorry, what would you? What were you saying? No, nothing. I was, I was just, uh, uh, I was just thinking, thinking. This is. This is nice. We haven't done this in a while. We haven't hung out. Yeah, Roger, you haven't... You haven't called me back. You haven't answered any of my emails. You fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, I was going through some stuff, but... I feel good. I feel... I feel alive. And I feel good, and I feel like... I don't feel like everything's going to be fine. So we, you and I are cool. We're cool. We're cool. And I hope Murray knows that we're cool. And, uh, you know, we should, we should be able to do this every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, we're cool. I'm, I am, truly I am happy to see you. It's nice. It is nice. This is my place. This is my place. Are you, are you still, um... No, I'm not drinking. It's okay, guys. I have some... I have some wine I bought earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have some... Raja, I think you But if you don't drink, it's fine. I think... <laughs> I think you should you maybe just... Good. Good for you. Well, I think you should go to bed because we got to wake up early tomorrow, you know? Yeah, no, have a bottle or two and call it a night. While wasted. <laughs> so hungover. <laughs> um, he was drinking whiskey earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he's going to throw up. Um, good. Well, okay. Uh, good night, Roger. I will see you tomorrow morning then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have... Uh, no, forget it. Anyways. What? I got some chicken fingers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, next time. Boop. Did you just boop me? And he jogs up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just boop me? <laughs> he trips up the th- third stairs. Roger, uh, you okay? Up. <laughs> Are you you okay? Gonna have some you chicken find your keys? fingers. Okay. He's singing he a chicken fingers song. He's got it. <laughs> I wait for him to get in through the door. <laughs> He's gone. Okay. Okay. Um, and Bobby uh, had left, so let's go into <laughs> yeah. um, let's go into the room. Uh, it's not it's not quite midnight. It's only kind of shortly after people left. That Neil, your uh, cell phone rings, and it is your wife calling. What's her name again? What? <laughs> Neil? I'm oh, sorry. What what happened? <laughs> He's been drinking too. <laughs> We've all been drinking. <laughs> He's been drinking too. Everyone's wasted. He's a little bit sauced. Uh, my wife's name. Uh, uh, it's Robbie. Robbie, right? Roby? Right. Okay, yeah. Really? No. What is it? It's Robbie or Roby. Uh, I, I said Robbie. R O B I. Robbie. Oh yeah, yeah, Robbie. yeah. Robbie. Yeah, she goes by Robbie, and uh, she. Yeah, you see, it's Robbie, baby, comes up on your phone. <laughs> Do you answer it? Nope. <laughs> it's great. So, and goes to voicemail, and then just pops up and says, you know, after a minute. New voicemail. What do you do? Uh, I have one of those uh, services where it'll translate the voicemail to text. 
and I just I read it. <laughs> I don't want so, to hear a voice. Got it. So you uh, have the voicemail translated into text, and it would be great if I could on the fly come up with how it screws up, because uh, that would be really funny. But <laughs> I can't, because there's always fun little screw ups. Um, <laughs> But as you're reading it, it says something along the lines of, Hey, didn't hear from you today. Hope you're okay. A man came by from the Office of Professional Medical Conduct for New York State and had a few questions. He said he needs to hear from you or he'll be back again soon. I'm not sure what it's about. But he said it would. It's about some of your patients, but wouldn't elaborate. Oh, Call shit. me tomorrow. I know it's late. You're probably sleeping. Bye, <laughs> Robbie. And then she said her name, <laughs> she said, which yeah, is why? really yeah, weird. Which is weird. It made sense in the text, yeah, like, but to think that that Robbie. was transcribed from a voice message. <laughs> All my odd. tamales. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so a, a man came by uh, from the Office of Professional Medical Conduct for New York State uh, asking uh, some questions. Okay. Yeah. I'll just give him some drugs. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now let's cut to Vicky. Um, back in your Airbnb? Yeah, yeah. She makes it back and then uh, she's like unpacking all her stuff and getting ready for tomorrow. And she looks at her phone to, or she opens her laptop to look at that email uh, with the information. All right. So, yeah, we see Vicky open up the email and you see that you're sent his like in PDF form, it's pages and pages of his personnel file, right from the Massachusetts State Police Department, which is uh, a f- freaking, you know, uh, just a ton of information. And you get his address right off the jump. You get his address in Massachusetts. You get a phone number as well, a home, a home phone number. You see as you're browsing through, I mean, it's getting late. Like, are you going to start reading all this now? I think she does like a skim. She just, she's curious. Like she wants to know if anything stands out as strange because it seems pretty clean. He's been with the police department for 20 years, but uh, anything that stands out as strange. And I think she's looking at it now, like in bed, you know, like half falling asleep, like on her laptop, scrolling. Half falling asleep, working on her laptop. Brief skim, you see, yes, 20 plus years of service. You see a lot of uh, distinguished sort of awards and stuff. You see uh, a time as president of the local chapter of the National Association of Police Organizations. You see, and that's kind of recent. Um, You see that he is five years out basically because he's about 20 years in so he's five years out from retirement which would be pretty standard and and you know that um but then something catches your eye just as you're about to like shut it down i got the address this guy is distinguished service you know that's kind of all i need and just as you're about to shut it down you start to see complaints that are being logged not only from like uh outside like um like complaints from uh civilians that have some sort of run-in but you see documented on june 8th 2015 a an incident with a another officer a detective emmeline skian and there was uh some sort of uh, complaint that um, it, there's no details because no charges were ever filed but it seemed to be something along the lines of uh, harassment or something like that uh, and uh, but charges were dropped and uh, that's uh, Detective Emmeline Skian and then you see that 
there are like four or five more of these some from like other detectives some from people outside and then uh, a note that he'd been put on temporary leave as of june 30th 2015 and yeah it just seems like this like drop off after all these years of like excellent service so something definitely happened and question the harassment was it only females or was it random across the board from what i can tell from the information no yeah it was uh not only females there's another one uh from a trooper uh trooper michael dawkins dawkin michael dawkin um with a similar uh, uh complaint okay um yeah that like she kind of like perks back up kind of highlights some stuff um command saves her pdf um And then has to go to bed because she's super, super tired. But she kind of leaves that as a note for when she wakes up in the morning, like, bring this up to the group. This is an edge on him. Um, And she closes the laptop and shuts off the light and goes to bed. Okay. And we will move to the next day. Uh, Where were you guys meeting? Um, I don't don't remember. I think we said the hospital, right? Hospital. Yeah, we said the hospital. Well, we can't. We can't or, meet at the hospital. Oh, we're I mean driving. at the Ritz. We, yeah. I mean we're at driving the Ritz. everyone. We're driving. Bobby. I'm driving yeah. everyone. We're driving. Every, okay, I'm picking up. Uh, I'm driving to uh, uh, Maybelline's Airbnb uh, and picking up uh, uh, Messiah at his Airbnb, and then we're grabbing Murnau. And we're heading. Uh, off. I don't. I would assume Messiah's driving. Messiah, oh, you, don't, you driving. don't get in a car, right? That's driven you by know, anyone other than you. Other <laughs> All, right. All right, follow us. Uh. So you guys are all good to go to the yep. hospital? Yeah. Yep. All right. So you all head to the hospital and you pull up to that gate and there's the same guard. Slowly pull up. He looks out the window. Can I see identification, please? <laughs> yeah, you're pretty thorough. Huh? There you go. That's oh, hey, hey, yeah, how you doing? Hey. Yeah. All right, good, morning. Yeah. Good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? He takes a cursory glance at your IDs, passes them back. And opens up the gate. You head in, does the same with Roger, and you guys are in the parking lot. I share the information that I found the night before. Oh. Um, <laughs> you tell everyone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you play the game? Well, uh, you, yeah, okay. Play yeah, the game. She, just, she mentions it. She says, I have to look into this more. Um, but there were some sort of complaints or allegations or something. Everything got dropped. There's no information in his file. Uh, I have to look into it, but I think first and foremost, we need to, I need to cross compare the handwriting analysis document to the log books. Right. Let's, let's get in there. Let's take a look. While I'm doing that, I mean, you guys could do something else. I don't want you breathing down my neck, makeshift. It's not going right. to take long. So oh, okay. take a look. You know that if you're there side by side, unless there's a real sort of tricky situation, you can probably identify it pretty quickly. Okay. Well, uh, all right. Let's do it. So yeah, you'll you'll walk in the front, and there in the morning is uh, Gail Houston, and she's smiling. Hey, good morning, Gail. How good are morning. you? Good <laughs> morning. Lovely as ever. Did you have a nice night? A shooter between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Get the door. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it aside. Um, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to get to the employee locker room and look in Richard Price's bag. <laughs> you want to look for his friend? I want to look for his <laughs> friend. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, Roger, Roger heads off. Um, <laughs> morning, like Gail. Um, can I take a look yes. at that log book again? I gotta go over some uh, some more names. I gotta <sighs> just do some more work. She's from okay. Boston, Gail, as you can tell by. I'm from Boston. <laughs> right. I, from Boston. I God, it's so Whoa. hard to it's so hard to get back into it. I'm trying uh, so uh, fucking hard. There it is, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that fucking log book. Fuck it, hey, right. You guys uh, know this room? This room's a nice room. Anyway. You, you, you're speaking so loudly. <laughs> Please, Sorry. Have I can hear you. Yes, I will get you the log book. 
and she grabs the logbook, passes it over to you. You set down this paper. You open up the logbook to the correct page. I believe uh, April 6th. I don't have my notes here, but I believe April 6th. And you compare the two. And you make an identical match. The handwriting of Dr. Elias Barbas on the check-in is the same handwriting as the request exemplar. Ooh. So all we know is that it's the same person. Right, which we kind of already knew, but right. we can place him at the hospital. Well, on we can't this, place him at the hospital. The second person who wrote the invitation wanted us to have this information, right. whoever this other person was. Let's right. also look at the video footage from the state yes. to determine if it is actually Exeter, the Exeter that we know. Right. Who who came in and signed in? That oh, would baby. answer at least another question. Yep. So we go talk to the IT guy. Thanks, Gail. Bye. Thank you, Gail. Okay. So you guys head right to security. Um, Roger, you are trying to go to a locker. I don't. Um, like, are there uh, lockers? I feel like there's an employee locker room or something, or in, they must have like cubbies. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's, say Esther, let's say Esther Samagina uh, is is there to kind of welcome you as well um, and is like um, yes I can I can well you've been down to security before so you can go ahead and and speak with Michael and uh, I can take you to the employee uh, locker room sure Thank and you. she'll uh, take you take Roger up there pardon me um, we see her take Roger up let you into the employee locker room. Can I ask what, what you're looking for? No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. Official investigation, uh, under, understood. Um, but if, if you need me, just, just let me know. Um, I'll, I'll just be outside. Thank you, I appreciate it. And she you steps back to. out into the hallway. Um, and so Roger just looks, are there names on the lockers, or is it all just no. like... Um, you know, he kind of wants to do just a, a quick search to see if he sees that bag or, or anything that indicates. <laughs> you don't anything. see the bag, but you see a bunch of, you know, closed lockers. Right, so he just starts popping and peering, popping and peering, popping and peering. He's, he's moving pretty quickly and quietly. Popping and peering. Popping pop and, and peering. Popping pop and peering. Pop and peering. And you do yeah, see kind of some nice. clothes, changes of clothes uh, <clears throat> in, in uh, lockers, shoes and such at the bottom of some of these lockers. Um, all men's clothes. Uh, we'll just say she took you to the men's side, the men's ward. And so uh, you're, you're looking through those clothes. Um, and about five or six lockers in, you open a locker and you see a black gym bag. Um. And then we go to security. <laughs> Where Michael Devon is like, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we just need to look at Great. a what little bit. what can I do of, for you? Uh, oh, yeah, Maybelline. Uh, we just need a certain... Maybelline? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, did you? Maybe, uh, what does that mean? I, did, I actually, I actually just <laughs> muttered something. <laughs> 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 that we just like call Francis God. James Bond. I think it's the funniest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not Francis uh, Bobby. We yeah, call Bobby, Bobby James Bond. Retcon. It? Retcon. It's hard. It's hard to remember the names. All right. Retcon. Maybelline would not answer in that situation. You right. would say Maybelline, and it, the room yeah. would be quiet, and we'd all be like. And I and I just say, I saved it by saying I remember that commercial. Maybe it's Maybelline. I yeah. love this song. You ever get that stuck in your head? Maybe it's Maybelline. You know. Maybe anyway. it's Maybelline. <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. Love this song. Anyway, uh, good oh, to I, see you. I am something. To say. Anyway, good to <laughs> see you. <laughs> How are you? What can I do for you? Uh, I would like a. Uh, I would like you to pull up some video footage from uh, August. 13th. Uh, I just want the front desk area, the uh, doorway. Um, I'm just curious about your security parameters for the building. I know they said it's impossible for somebody to, you know, run out the front door or whatever, uh, but I want to see. Why, why are we looking at August 13th? Uh, that's because that's the date I need. Okay. And he starts pulling it up and he pulls up uh, video data for August 13th. 
and starts playing it for you. Scrub through. Scrub through. Scrub through. I just want to see when people enter and exit the building. Nobody of note enters or exits the building that day. Fuck, did I fuck up the date? Yes. <laughs> Damn it. I was That's like, why wait. I asked, why did you want to look at that date? Because I could have helped six, you. Dick. Oh, April. Wait, what? Well, that was April. Was it April 6th? August 13th remember. is the date of Di- Lyra oh. Westover's incident. Oh, I read the wrong thing. No, uh, April 6th is the date on the log that it seems that Dr. Elias Barbas right. came. Thank you. April 6th. To Actually, the John Jansky. This is good information. All right, now jump to April 6th. <laughs> Jump to April 6th. Uh, okay. I actually have to give me a pause for a second. Just talk amongst yourselves because I got to look up and see if uh, if you can do this. I don't know if they keep the records that long. Uh, That's and I, okay. I know uh, that they, I saw it before. Maybelline. They can't fooey on me. Um, it's Maybelline. Maybe it's, it's Maybelline. Maybelline. Did it, did it, did it. <laughs> you're gonna kill Ty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're just crazy talking about it's her makeup. Um, okay, so well, let's say that they don't keep the logs and they don't have the video footage. We can still take the information to um, Barbus and go to his house. Oh, she also tells the group I have his address, obviously, with all the other information. Um, but uh, I guess I don't know what our angle is. Like, if he's our target. <clears throat> What do we do? Why? How do we talk to him? We 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 need answers. We we. we I mean, truth. we just got a voice on the phone that says all of a sudden Exeter's our target, but we don't know anything. We we, I mean, we know he's involved. Personally we know he's involved. Yeah. With this incident that we're already investigating. Right. So let's just find out everything that we can think of to find out here, and then just go to him and yeah. see if he has anything. We'll figure what out else? where we stand. What yeah. else did you guys want to do here today at the well, hall? I want to like, talk to Ed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. By yourself or without me, anyway. I'll uh, I'll go wait in the car. <laughs> wait in the car. <laughs> go, in go, the car. Uh, go sing some jingles out. Go in the sing line. this Maybelline song. I'm trying to get this out of my head. I can't get this out of my head. <laughs> Um, get, a, get a martini, shake and not stir. <laughs> oh, I want a martini. <laughs> Thank you. I love martinis. <laughs> Uh, yes, sorry. I will. Um, he'll be able to pull them up. They'll they'll keep these these files digitally, and so he is able to pick it up, find it, and he brings up April sixth for you and starts playing it. Let's go back to the locker room, Roger. Oh, okay. You see a black gym bag. What does he do? Roger, just pop, pop, pop. Let's use his alertness to make sure there's no one around. Roll alertness. 57 under 82. You hear a conversation outside the door. Nurse Semajin is talking to somebody. Sound like a male voice? Sounds like a female voice. All right. Is the bag moving? Is the bag moving? <laughs> is the bag moving? <laughs> I imagine this is, is like the thing on the, on the guy's chest from Total Recon. <laughs> Quato's in the back. Uh, Quato. <laughs> My God, dude, that's amazing. You're so paranoid. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so he's just going to. Uh, is he going to? He's going to unzip the bag. He's going to touch the bag. You haven't even touched it yet. Let's go step by step. I'm touching it, <laughs> and I'm Are unzipping you, well, it. It's like kind of stuffed into the of locker. Of course it is. You're uh, pulling so it out of the locker. I pull it out of the locker. All right, you pull it out of the locker. Alertness on high. Definitely has definitely has something in it. Oh, God. So he, he, oh, he sets it down. Sets it down on the bench. Goes to grab the zipper. And we go to security. Ugh. In security, we see people walking in scrubbing, 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 scrubbing. <laughs> and then the exact figure of Agent Exeter walking in, boop, signing in, and then walking through. Hold on. Uh, just rewind it slow. Uh, right here, he goes back 10 seconds. And farther. then plays at normal speed. And you see Agent Exeter walking into the hospital and signing in, looking exactly like the man that you met at the Gateway Bridges restaurant. Marvelous. And that's April, April 6th, 2015. This year. This year. 
can I see, um, do you have a way to, to match this timestamp to the additional cameras in the hospital to see where a person goes? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can do that. Could you pull up a sequential order of, uh, just, I mean, this you person's mean fine. You the time code? Right, the time code, but a sequential order of them walking to matching them to each camera. Could you pull that up? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I can do that. And he starts to go through the process, and you see him walking in. You see him walking up some steps. Uh, oh, before that, you see him like sort of surrendering stuff that he has on him to you know at the front desk, and then walking in. Does he surrender a gun? Uh, yes, he surrenders a gun. Is he in uniform? Uh, no. He's just, yeah, he's, he's in detective. plain clothes. Yeah. Detective. Yeah. And. Doctor Detective. Doctor Detective. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. that should have been my Doc- name. Detective, <laughs> detective <laughs> Doctor. Detective. Why did I. Detective Detective. <laughs> he, walk, he walks up, steps, and you see him walk uh, through the different cameras all the way up to the third floor where he walks into the waiting room outside of Dr. Dallin's office, and there's a camera in there, but no camera in Dallin's office. And you see Dallin come out of his office. Smile, liar, big handshake to uh, Agent Exeter, a little tap on the back, and then he just walks him into his office and closes the door behind him. What? I want to fast stop, and we cut back <laughs> to the locker room. I can't take it. We I cut know. back to the locker room. Well, you want to fast forward to when he walks out of the office? <laughs> yeah. 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 He walks out of the office and he's lobotomized. And he's like, yeah, he's a big scar on his He walks out like this. He has a huge scar. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. straight into the and camera. He's, he's walking like at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, um, you, yeah, you, we'll cut back. The door closes. And then we cut back to the locker room. And uh, Roger unzips the gym bag we see like a little bit of what looks like white whitish sort of uh, coloring and he pulls apart the two sides and even Roger's eyes go wide as he sees the long mummified corpse of a child Oh. And we'll see you next time. What? <laughs> what? That's what gross. Oh my god! You opened the chip bag! It was too soon! Oh my god! Who is this guy? Holy that is shit! Happening. I thought this it was, was gonna be a pair of champion socks! <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't even understand what's going on. Oh baby! Oh, oh baby! Are ever getting You're out of here alive? So deep! <laughs> You're in so deep. You're definitely not getting out of here alive. Who wrote this? Who wrote this? <laughs> oh, definitely not getting out of here alive. Thank you, Bobby. All right. Great job, guys. Great <laughs> sesh. Thanks, everybody. Oh Good night. We'll see you next time. Uh, until then, oh. don't, look in, don't look in any gym bags. Oh, my God. <laughs>